Welcome again. Today we discuss the relationship between one gene and one polypeptide. Let's begin first with this command term, discuss. When you see a question or a statement beginning with this command term in IB biology, it requires you to first outline the process and then to look at alternative hypotheses or pros and cons for a particular situation. In the case of the one gene, one polypeptide hypothesis, we would need to explain what it means and then look at how this hypothesis has changed over time, giving reasons for these changes. And the hypothesis first came about even before the structure of the DNA double helix was presented by Watson and Crick in the 1950s. Going back to the time of Beetle and Tatum, when they worked with the mole Neurospora, and this really was the birth of molecular biology and modern-day biochemical genetics. At that time, Beetle and Tatum presented what was known as the one gene, one enzyme, or one protein hypothesis. This was based on the idea that one gene would code for one protein, remembering that the understanding of the structure of DNA and protein synthesis was limited at that time. Soon after the one gene, one enzyme, or one protein hypothesis was proposed, biologists realized that this hypothesis would not explain proteins like hemoglobin, which is made up of an aggregation or a coming together of four polypeptide chains. And in time, the one gene, one protein hypothesis gave way to the one gene, one polypeptide hypothesis, built on the idea that DNA would be replicated, messenger RNA would enter the cytoplasm, and then transfer RNA would bring amino acids to assemble a polypeptide. So in this way, one gene would give rise to one polypeptide which in turn would eventually give rise to proteins. In time, the one gene, one polypeptide hypothesis also proved to be inadequate. And it was Sharp and Roberts in 1977 who proposed that messenger RNA, which is transcribed from one gene and goes into the cytoplasm, this messenger RNA can undergo changes that are brought about by structures called plisosomes, which are tiny bits of RNA and proteins complexed together. And these plisosomes can remove certain sections of messenger RNA, these so-called introns, leaving you with a specialized piece of messenger RNA, a unique piece of messenger RNA, which would then go on to express itself, an exon, that would give rise to maybe polypeptide A. And then another splice or another intron could be removed, leaving a specific exon of another form to provide us with polypeptide B. With this kind of post-transcriptional modification proposed by Sharp and Roberts, we now realize that the one gene, one polypeptide hypothesis is also limited.